Dear chess friends, many of us I think have many problems when it comes to playing chess, many of us have problems in the opening stage, many of us have maybe problems in the middle game stage, maybe also in the end game stage, but I think one of the most important problems in every chess career is how to find a good opening repertoire. It's not so easy um, to find ourselves really uh, an opening repertoire that fits for us because there are so many opportunities also for both sides, especially with the black pieces, I think we have, the uh, have a tough time because when you play with the white pieces you can always make a decision in the first move if you're e4 player then it can stuck of course to e4 play but when it comes to uh playing with the black pieces i think many of us want to know what's the best opening against e4 what's the best opening against d4 how to meet c4 what should i play play if he plays the first move knight you have three so it's i think really really um theme for for your whole life uh, i had my issues also with my opening repertoire and i play basically the queen's gam declined queen's indian nimzo indian Indian uh, against d4, Sicilian, Karokan, uh, normal e5 play also against e4, against knight f3, I go into the Spassky defense and similar stuff. So I basically know what I will play if my opponent plays e4, d4 or c4. One of the great openings that um, is uh, great against d4 for sure is the Greenfield defense. And I think many of us are playing the Greenfield defense, but when you see now this game, how this opening can get dismantled, how this opening can get destroyed. You will maybe even stop to play the Greenfield defense. Uh, in my opinion, the Greenfield is great, but when I saw now this one uh, here, it's a beautiful game played by Stockfish against Rebel. I'm not sure anymore because uh, this is so brutal what Stockfish did here to the Greenfield event. So be prepared. This is simply chess from another dimension. So let's see now this game. Stockfish opened with the move D4. Knight to F6 was Rebel's response uh, here, C4 by Stockfish G6 after Knight to C3. And D5, we are now in the Greenfield defense. C takes d5, knight to d5, we have the exchange variation, e4, knight takes c3, b takes c3, this is the, the most often line uh, played in the Griffel defense, after bishop to g7, now Stockfish uh, 15 makes now the decision with bishop to c4, there are many lines, bishop to e2, bishop to d3, it's possible, knight to f3, knight to e2, so every move is basically good here for white, so after move, bishop to c4, we have c5, which is a natural idea by black, breaking now the small, small pawn chain that white has here, of course, in the center of the board we have now knight to e2 which is of course much much better to play than knight to f3 because if knight to f3 happens then you could get pinned by this annoying move bishop to g4 so here knight to c6 was played by rebel continuing the pressure around the square d4 and now after bishop to e3 notice that the uh, game is simply a battle for the d4 score like in the usual group for the fans so it's now as i said really common position that happens many many times so in the continuation we have now kingside casting kingside casting also by Stockfish, knight to a5, we have bishop to d3, and after move b6 here, the rebel engine is trying now to reroute the bishop here to b7, develop it also, maybe hitting uh, here the pawn on e4, but in the long terms, maybe also create some tactics against the pawn on g2. Now Stockfish goes e5, a brave decision, because it opens, of course, the long diagonal for the light square bishop. Here in the continuation, we have now the move e6 by rebel, of course, fixing the structure, not allowing some ideas of maybe f4, f5, uh, maybe e6 in the later stage of the game so so far with the move f5 uh here black is controlling uh, pardon me with the move e6 black is controlling this very important square f5 so in the continuation knight to g3 and stockfish i think sends some blood immediately with this move knight to g3 is already a preparation to launch a flank attack with h4 h5 because this flank attack i think makes really sense when you think about it harder um, first of all what we can notice is that black has only uh, the bishop as a defender in front of the king and also there are several problems on dark squares although still black has a dark square bishop but it's not so easy really to defend this position like this you have many weaknesses already and also what is very important to notice here is that the knight is far away from the action the knight is on a5 so it will need two three maybe even four uh, moves in order to get back somehow into the game so so far a good strategic idea here by stockfish 15 rerouting now uh here the knight to g3 and 
uh, hoping here to launch an early flank attack with h4 h5 so bishop to b7 normal development now we have queen to g4 very cool move also by stoppers we have to say not rushing into the attack including more pieces into the attack makes really sense now in this type of position after c takes d4 c takes d4 notice that the queen on g4 is also lined up um here and protects the d4 pawn the d4 pawn is really a weakness it's a backward pawn it's a strategic disadvantage of course um here i think we have to also understand a little bit here the pawn structure in the center of the board if white doesn't make anything out of this attack if white's attack splashes somehow if black defends this position if black makes uh, some kind of a good defense here i think the game is over for white because of this disadvantage of the backward pawn and also because of this pawn majority with this two versus one uh queen side situation if this re game reaches the end game stage black would be much much better because of the possibility to create a distant pass bond so as i said this is now uh really a razor sharp game because white needs now to destroy black's defense if white doesn't make that happen if white reaches the end game stage somehow i think the game is over for white we can we have to understand as i said really the pawn structure here in this particular game so that's why stockfish uh, got challenged with move h5 here the rebel engine hoped to kick away uh the queen somehow to get it out of the attack and you can guess now what happens probably many of us would sense the move but many of us wouldn't even play this move because um, many of us would be still scared i'm not sure if i would hit the pawn on h5 but you can guess as i said what stockfish did stockfish placed this brutal knight to h5 immediately and as i said it it seems tempting because after g takes h5 first you have to step back with the queen or take out the pawn but now from this point on you have to play such an accurate um, attack here from white's perspective if you play just one slightly inaccurate move i think the game could be over so in the beginning the engine also at home gives you equal chances for for black so also um, um here in the evaluation is, is that basically black can maybe defend this position but as i said you have to play now really accurate move also here for black so it's now really really a beautiful sharp tactical game so after move queen to h5 f5 uh, here the rebel engine is trying to lock the long diagonal for the light square bishop stockfish takes of course ampassan is hoping uh, still to get an open position and now after rook to f6 here rebel played i think so far a solid defense also with the idea to reroute the rook to h6 and then to hit the pawn on h2 maybe with the preparation of queen to c creating also some dangerous tactics uh here against the white king but as i said the only problem that i saw in black's defense is this move knight to h uh, knight to a5 the knight is simply too far away from the action it's almost like black is playing without this piece so really really you need too much time in order to get it back somehow into the game so stockfish plays first a check after king to f8 we have rook to e1 including a new attacker into the game pretty uh, good idea of course when you are on, on the attacking side we have queen to d5 also creating a checkmate threat on g2 here stockfish plays now queen to g4 connects the queen uh here uh, to the pawn on g2 but also is now not allowing any further trades of pieces i think what black's also defensive idea could be here is somehow to trade off the queens hoping at least to uh simplify the game enough uh, then of course as we said to reach the end game stage but so far uh stockfish is not allowing here uh, this kind of an idea with beautiful active play so knight to c4 now the, finally the knight is coming into the game bishop to g5 hitting the rook rook to f7 rook from a to d1 and you can sense what's going to happen in the next couple of moves we can expect really uh very soon a beautiful rook lift by stockfish now rook to d3 rook to g3 rook to h3 are realistic opportunities in order to continue the pressure so now comes maybe the first move that i really didn't like by rebel it's the move knight to d6 and this move makes in the beginning really sense because you are uh getting a preparation to get the knight on f5 but what i like more um be about this position for black maybe is this idea queen to d7 lining up maybe the queen uh to the rook first and now after bishop to g6 uh you can even i think leave the rook here unprotecting just play bishop to d5 bishop to d5 i think would create really a nice grip in the center it would create really a compact position especially around the square e6 i think you see now in the next couple moves why it was so important to defend the pawn in e6 
The knight to d6 move, I think many of us would play, and as I said, it seems like a perfect idea. You get the knight on f5, you get a new defender into the game, but actually, with the move knight to d6, you're getting also a little bit in front of black's king. This tactical motif, you understand after a couple more moves, because bishop to d2 will come with a huge threat of, uh, of bishop to b4. So the knight is also lined up against the king. So as I said, only after a couple moves, uh, you understand why maybe this move knight to d6 watch was not so good. As I said, in my opinion, queen to d7 may be a slightly better way to go than, as I said, maybe even leave the rook uh, hanging here because you hope maybe that your opponent gives up his light square bishop, his powerful light square bishop, and maybe you could go into an endgame maybe with two minor pieces against your opponent's rook. And the main issue is, I think, that you get um, the bishop on d5 where it's creating at least some kind of a compact position. Maybe this was the way to go. But as I said, here after rook to d1, knight to d6 was now rebel's move. We have h4, continue the pressure, h5, uh, h6 and similar stuff. Queen takes a2. Hmm. Here rebel got a little bit greedy, I think. Maybe the queen should have stayed there. Uh, queen takes a2. Okay, maybe later when you simplify the game, maybe... A even something else would be better maybe now this idea knight to f5 you're getting at least somehow a new defender into the game it seems more logical to me uh here the continuation after h4 as we said queen takes a2 and here after rook to d2 the queen comes on d5 and now after rook to d3 now comes the stunning idea of course we want to play this beautiful rook with with rook to d3 rook to g3 or rook to h3 now queen to c4 uh was played by uh this engine rebel we have bishop to d2 and as i said the knight is getting now uh, in front of the king so now bishop to b4 as a long-term plan is uh, an idea so far it's not possible because the queen is on c4 but you don't want to have your queen like this the queen is a little bit stuck we have to say to the defense of the b4 square sort of uh, if you move the queen then bishop to b4 could happen and now uh, here in the continuation rook to e8 was played by rebel for instance, if you play now knight to f5, let's see this problem. Look at this, what actually happens. You have even this stunning idea. Rook to e6 would be really the beautiful tactical shot. And it's a beautiful geometry that's happening now. The bishops are really uh, in beautiful squares. For instance, if you play now queen to a6, look at this. Bishop to b4 is coming into the game. You have to now step back and now the king gets in front of the queen really really dirty stuff even if you cover yourself here with the move uh, knight to e7 then queen to e6 is of course uh, losing the queen on spot so everything is so messed up here for uh, for black for instance after move um, uh, rook to e6 uh, you can also play maybe queen to d3 here uh, grabbing the rook but actually uh, this is again not working because of the stunning tactic bishop to b4 you have to now cover with knight to uh, knight to e7 and look at this how beautiful uh, geometry again we have here now the bishop is uh, attacking the queen so again the game would be over here for black so really really uh, incredible incredible idea so after move bishop to d2 you see you don't have time anymore to play this knight to f5 that you could have played a couple moves ago or you you cannot even play bishop to d5 anymore because your position is so cramped so it really really already already messed up game here for black so that's why rook to e8 trying to somehow connect to rook to the square e6 that's a little bit vulnerable we have to save in the continuation bishop to g6 hitting the rook and now rebel is uh, leaving this um, rook on f7 unprotected that we have said uh, that white will probably not give up such a powerful bishop for such a bad rook but as you remember before it was already an option for black now you're making this same idea without this move bishop to d5 in my opinion um, that was uh, the point where the game a little bit uh, went into simply white's favor here so after move rook to e7 now rook to c1 hitting the queen the queen has to step back to d5 and now stop which continues the pressure with the move h5 uh, here bishop to a6 was played by a rebel attacking the rook even if you play something like rook to f6, then we have this one, bishop to g5, you have to play maybe knight to uh, e4, but look at this, we play bishop to f6, knight to f6, and now after rook to f3, again, the game is really, really messed up here for, for black. Or after bishop to a6, what you could play maybe instead of this move, knight to f5 again, then bishop to b4 again is very dangerous, so it's not so easy again to defend this position all over the board. So, as I said, the 
the activity that White has here with his pieces is so beautiful. Uh, it's such an open game. Everything is look at this. Everything is really just only only on the defensive side. All of these pieces just in in passive shape. So really really a beautiful game here by Stalker. So after move h5, the Rebel engine tried as I said Bishop to a6, hitting the Rook on d3. But now again a beautiful move as we said Rook to g3, and there is not only now uh, a threat of Rook to g7 or queen to g7 actually the serious threat is queen to g8 where it could lead into of course into a checkmate pattern or something so it's not so easy as i said to defend now for the position for black in the continuation the rebel engine tried a dirty attack rook to f2 because after king to f2 the bishop would come into the game with a tempo so that's why stockfish kept it calm after rook to f2 we have now bishop to e3 and again nothing spectacular also here for black instead of this move rook to f2 you could maybe try queen to d4 taking um uh, the pawn immediately and actually i think this was also the only way maybe for black to survive this attack somehow because after bishop to f7 uh, the queens would be off the board after king to um, f7 actually bishop to b4 is still dangerous so the knight is hanging you have to play something like rook to d7 after bishop to d6 uh, we have king rook takes d6 and now uh, rook to c7 would be a continuation but actually instead of this move um, rook to d7 protecting uh, the knight on d6 you could play bishop to h6 a counter-attack at least now of course white could, would continue the pressure against the knight on d6 but now after bishop to e2 maybe with f3 knight to f5 bishop to uh, e7 king to e7 maybe i'm not saying this is drawish but uh, maybe black can survive somehow maybe going into this two rooks versus three minor pieces end game still of course uh white is much much better although black maybe has some chances with these two connected pawns the evaluation is plus four for white but maybe in human level um black could hope for something i'm not sure as i said this was maybe the way to go after move rook to g3 as we said a rook takes f2 was rebels continuation bishop to e3 now of course queen to d4 is never an opportunity the rook has to step back the we have here h6 knight to f5 now the knight is coming into the game but after bishop to f5 we have queen to f5 and here a uh, stock which grabs now uh, the bishop on g7 we have king to g8 and now after queen to h4 rook to g7 rook takes g7 king to g7 and actually believe me or not in this position the rebel engine even resigned really really wild stuff but when you think about it harder it's game over really because now the stunning move is d5 with the preparation to play bishop to d4 if you play for instance something like d4 then bishop to h6 it's really really a beautiful move after rook to h6 we have rook to c7 is coming in a beautiful way into the game the bishop doesn't matter it doesn't matter if this bishop is uh here so you get even a beautiful checkmate here so it's not working so as i said if you play king to g6 we have rook to c6 and you lose the rook so everything is so messed up as i said after move d5 you could try maybe king to f7 escape again but again this motif rook to c7 is working here as we said here in this position bishop to d4 so so messed up the position after move rook to, king takes g7 actually uh here as we said rebel and uh rebel simply resigned so pooh incredible incredible attack by stock for 15 in the greenfield is so all over the place there were threats really stunning idea let's go to this critical moment be honest yourself i i myself probably would not uh play this knight takes h5 to move maybe in blitz bullet games of course it seems tempting but we have to find a uh, really the best aggressive most attacking moves here uh stoffers of course finds this kind of idea but i i'm not sure how many of us would maybe dubov daniel dubov would play this move for sure uh i think also um great attackers like nordebek abdo satorov will play this move so uh it's really really interesting idea i think this position could happen to you many times because it's a common strategic idea of the greenfield uh defense but really stunning stunning attack here again by stock 15. so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot interesting ideas of this beautiful attack for sure if you want to see more stockfish games uh, really brutal games like this check out my common chess games play by computer series here's the link of our whole playlist and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say chess is the best of course